Hi guys, welcome to the 6.03 assignment. I'm Mrs. Glenn, let's get started. All right, so just like all the other videos, you're gonna bring up your 6.03 assignment on Canvas, on my learning, and have it side by side as you watch the video so that you can listen to how to do it and then do your own question. And then go to the next question and do the same thing. So for number one, given the box plot, will the mean or the median provide a better description of center? So you can take a look at this box plot and see that the median is shifted to the left. So it's on the left-hand side. And when we see that, it's actually the opposite skew. So S-K-E-W means how it's skewed or how it's being pushed from one side. So the side that it's being pushed from is the right-hand side. So we would say the median would be the best uh, data distribution if it's skewed to the right. So it's skewed to the right, so we're gonna use the median. If it was right down the center, you would use the mean, but this is not down the center, so you're gonna use the median. All right, go ahead and hit pause and complete your number one. Okay, for number two, the data set below shows the number of shoppers in each store at a shopping mall. What is the true statement based on what is a true statement based on the data set below? So you have numbers ranging from one up to fifteen. So those and in each box is the store and how many shoppers are in each store. So there is one outlier which indicates that there's a smaller number in a store. So let's take a look at what outlier would be what number would be the outlier. All right, so there's a, a quick and easy way to calculate an outlier, and you just go to this miniwebtool.com forward slash outlier dash calculator and put in the values to find the, the outlier. Now you could do the way that we did it in 602 where you have to find the IQR, then times it by 1.5 and add it to your um, upper quartile and subtract it from your quartile one, but nobody's got time for that. So I wanted to show you a quicker way to do it if you have um, a web page available. So I just put in all the values. It does not matter if they're in order from least to greatest because this is a uh, web tool, so it will automatically do that for you. So we're just gonna hit the green button here. And you can see that out of our list of numbers, the outlier is the number one. So let's go back to our screen. Okay, so they determined that the outlier would be the number one. So therefore, a true statement could say that there's only one outlier that indicates an unusually small number of shoppers in a store because the number one is the smallest number out of the list of numbers that we have. So um, it just indicates that there is an unusually small number of shoppers, and that is the outlier. All right, so go ahead and pause this one and do your number two. All right, so for number three, if the outliers are not included, what is the mean of the data set? So if you remember in middle school, mean means that you would add up and divide. And I think the saying goes, my mean teacher makes me add them up and divide when you're trying to find the mean. So what you're gonna do first is you have to eliminate the outlier because that's what it asked you to do in the directions. So we have to determine which one is the outlier before we start. So we're gonna go back to that website we used in question number two. All right, so we're gonna click Calculate Outliers once we have all of our values in the box here. And it determined that the outlier in our situation is the number two. So now we're going to cross out the number two. All right, so we're gonna cross out the number two and then we're going to add up all of our numbers and divide by how many there are. So you're gonna add 65 plus 72 plus 43 all the way down to 109. And then we're gonna divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So keep that number in your calculator and then hit divide by 10. And it will tell you what your values are or what your mean is for these 10 numbers. So when you take 781 and you divide it by 10, you get 78.1. And that would be the mean for this data set. And it did not tell you to round to the nearest whole number or anything, so you just leave it like it is and go on to number four. So go ahead and do this on number three on the My Learning assignment and hit pause and then come back to me to do number four. All right, number four. It says, which of the following is true of the data set represented by the box plot? 
So I can see here that we have two dots that are on the outside of the box plot, and then I have a median that is shifted to the right. And I also have a whisker on the left-hand side, that's that long line on the left-hand side that's a lot longer than the whisker on the right. So therefore, this is an asymmetrical box plot, which means that the data is not um, very valid because the numbers are kind of all over the place. So what are the, what, which of the following is a true statement? Well, we could say that removing the outliers would not affect the mean, median. So these outliers would be the blue dots. So if you think about the median, that's the one in the middle. So if you take, say, five dots that you have. All right, so say these five dots right here represent, um, you know, the numbers that we're looking for. And the median is the one here in the middle. This is the median. So those blue dots on the outside represent the two dots that are up on the box plot. And if we were to take those away, now right now our median is the one in the middle right here, right? If we were to take those two dots on the outside away, will that change our median at all? Or is our median still in the middle? So it's still in the middle, which means those two outside outliers, the lowest and the highest, would not affect the median. Now that's not necessarily true for every value. It's true for this one because the outliers are a really low outlier and a really high outlier, which means the two numbers are on the outside of that box plot. If the two outliers were closer or included in that, or the two numbers were inside that box plot, then it would not be the same answer. But because they're on the outside, when you take them away, the median doesn't change. All right, so go ahead and hit pause, and when you're done with number four, come back and we'll do number five together. All right, number five, when the outliers are removed, how does this mean, how does the mean change? All right, so we have a dot plot here. We have a 15, a 16, two 18s, a 20, and a 37. So we can't automatically assume that that 37 is an outlier. We have to make sure and check because sometimes they could be tricking you and one of the answer choices could be that there is no outlier. What are you talking about? So we have to go ahead and put in those values into that website or again, you can hand calculate it like I showed you last week on the 602 video. But just for sake of time, we're going to use that website. All right, so now we're going to hit calculate outliers to see if we have an outlier and 37 sure enough is our outlier. So we're not going to include that one. So it says when the outliers are removed, how does the mean change? So in order to show how the mean changes, we have to calculate it with the 37 and then we have to calculate it without the 37. So identify the outlier, which we already have done. So that's 37, find the means with and without. So with the outlier, including it would be six numbers. So when we divide by six, you get 20.67 with the outlier. Without the outlier, we're only gonna be dividing by five because that would be there's only five numbers that we're adding up and you would get 17.4. So without that outlier, our number would go down, our mean would decrease by a value of 3.27. And that makes sense because if you have a high number that you're including, it's going to make your mean higher. But if you take it out, it makes your mean lower. Just like if you get a higher average on an assignment, it makes your um, average go up but if you take it out, it'll make your average go back down again. So go ahead and hit pause and do this question and then come back to me and we'll do the next one. All right, number six, a student wants to report on the number of algebra assignments her friends do in a week. The collected data are below. Which measure of center is the most appropriate for this situation and what is its value? So we have two, 13, seven, nine, eight, zero, and five. Imagine being in the class that gets 13 assignments and then your friend is in a class that gets zero. Now that wouldn't be very fair, but I wonder how they would do in the class and understanding algebra if they don't have any assignments to work on. Because math, you only get better with if you practice. But that's besides the point, so let's keep going. So I created a box plot here and you're probably wondering, how did you make the box plot so quick? Well, if you go to this website, Decimals right here, Let's go there. It actually will create the box plot for you. So all you gotta do is plug in your values into this little box here, and we would be able to create the box plot. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so after you have your values in here, you need to make sure that these brackets stay the same. Don't take the brackets out because then it will not create your box plot for you. Um, and just so that you can find this easy, all you gotta do is type in the word Desmos 
and then box plot and it'll bring you right to the screen and then just change the values inside this bracket and hit enter and it'll create your box plot for you. So you can see our box plot is a median of seven right here. And you can also see that the median is shifted to the right. So if it's shifted to the right and not in the center, that means it's asymmetrical. And if it's asymmetrical, we want to use the median for the best measure, measure of center. So it asks us which is the best measure of center and then what is that value? So the median would be the best measure of center and the value is seven for the median. Now remember, I did show you how to do a box and whisker plot longhand um, in 602. However, this is just the quick way to find it. So it is important to understand how to do it on your own if you were having to do like a state testing of some sort where you couldn't go to a website and calculate it. But for time's sake, this is, you know, after you've already learned it, you're now just trying to figure out what would be the best measure of center. And remember, if it is off center, you're gonna use the median. If it's right down the middle, then you use the mean. And um, if it's in the middle, that would be a symmetrical box plot. And if it's not in the middle, that's an asymmetrical box plot. So good luck on your 603 assignment. This is the end of the video.